Welcome to our online. Now here we're going to present to you the rules of solving linear equations in algebra. There's five of them. We should perform them in, these or in this particular order, but it's not necessary that every one of those in each case will have to be uh, executed. And it doesn't mean that you have to do it exactly like this every single time. Sometimes it makes sense to kind of do things in a slightly different order. But in general, if you follow these rules more or less in this particular order, it will become a lot easier to solve linear equations in algebra. The first rule is that they tell, they're telling us to first eliminate all the fractions, decimals, and parentheses. It's usually a good idea to get rid of those first right off the bat. The second thing we want to do is move all the terms that, in, that have the variable in them to the left side of the equation and then move all the terms without the variable to the right side equation. Sometimes we can do those two rules at the same time. It saves us time and makes it a little bit easier and it won't cause any problems if we do this at the same time. The next thing we do is since we now have all the terms with the variable on one side of the equation and all the numbers on the other side of the equation, we now combine like terms. We add all the terms on the left side, we add all terms on the right side. And finally, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of the variable. You might kind of wonder, say, what, what did he say there? What did he write? Well, we'll show you an example of that because it's actually pretty straightforward. So first, let's take a rule, a look at rule number one. Eliminate fractions, decimals, and parentheses. So here we have an example with parentheses. There we have fractions. There we have decimals. How do we do that? Well, we'll get into a little bit more detail later at the next videos, but let's show you the general approach of how we do that. First of all, here we don't have any parentheses on the left side, but we do on the right side. So we're going to distribute the four over the two terms inside the parentheses, which means that this will then become five plus 30 X is equal to four times three, which is 12 and four times four X, which is plus 16 X. And then we would continue to execute the problem as you see in the rules. On the next one, what we need to do there is multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator for 8 and 6 is 24. 24 can be divided by 8 and can be divided by 6. So we're going to multiply the left side by 24 and we're going to multiply the right side by 24. If we do that, 8 goes into 24 three times, so 3 times 5 is 15 plus 6 goes in 24 four times, so 4 times x is 4x equals, we do the same on the right side, 6 goes into 24 four times, so 4 times minus 5x is minus 20x, and 8 goes into 24 three times, so 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. So this is how we eliminate fractions. Now when we try to eliminate decimals, what we need to do there is multiply both sides of the equation by 10, by 100, by 1000, to eliminate all the decimals. We have one decimal place here, one decimal place here, one decimal place here, so we normally multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the one decimal place, but here we have two decimal places, so to eliminate all of them, we should multiply both sides of the equation by 100. So we're going to multiply the left side by 100, and we're going to multiply the right side by 100. I'm running out of room here, that's why I put the 100 a little bit higher. So now when we multiply this, we get 20x plus 460 is equal to minus 60x, and here there would be plus 1,268. So notice there's no more decimals in the equation. I can now continue solving the equation using the rest of the rules. Now for rule number two, it tells us to move all the terms with the variable to the left side. So here we have a minus 3x on the right side, so we're going to move that to the left side, move it this way, and so this becomes 2 plus 5x, and notice we had a minus 3x there, which becomes a plus 3x on the left side, equals 8. On rule number 3, we're supposed to move all the terms without the variable to the right side, so the 2 goes to the right side, so this becomes 8x equals 8 minus 2, because it was a plus 2 on the left side, it becomes a minus 2 on the right side. If you take a look at this one right here, we could have at the same time also moved the 2 to the right side at the same time that we moved the, two, the minus 3 to the left side. So the 
plus two could have come over here and made it into a minus two, which is what we did there. So essentially, we could have done both of them at the same time. Rule number four tells us to combine like terms on both sides of the equation. On the left side, we only have terms that include the variable. On the right side, we only have terms that does not include the variable. So here we can say that 3x plus 5x is equal to 8x, and 2 plus 4 is equal to 16. So you can see now that we have the left side reduced and the right side reduced to just a single term. And finally, they tell us to divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of the variable. Here, in this case, the numerical coefficient is 8. In this case, the numerical coefficient is 2. In other words, here we're going to divide this by 8. And of course, if we divide the left side of the equation by 8, we must divide the right side of the equation by 8. So this becomes x is equal to 2. In this example, notice we're going to divide the left side by 2, and we're going to divide the right side by 2 as well. We have to divide both sides by the same number, and 2x divided by 2 is x, and 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And so those are the steps that we're going to follow to solve linear equations in algebra. We first eliminate parentheses, fractions, decimals, then we move all the terms with the variable to the left side, we move all the terms that don't have the variable to the right side, we combine like terms, and then we divide both sides of the equation essentially by the number in front of the variable. And that is how we solve linear equations in algebra. I guess now we're ready to do some good examples. That's how it's done.